Learn jQuery 15 minutes! The first thing we want to learn about jQuery are basic selectors. Basic selectors are, are just like CSS selectors. You can use this to real quickly run through your document and select anything that you need to then manipulate. So for example, we're just going to start with the dollar sign and then write a paragraph. Now this is selecting all the paragraphs on the pages and there's four of them. Let's write a quick CSS method to just uh, get the border and turn it red. Now when I save this, all four of these paragraphs will just turn red because I'm using this paragraph selector tag. But now what if I want to select only the paragraphs with the class of lead? Or I could use parent and child as well. So all of them that are in the in the body, I guess, you know, that would still be the lead. You could even select not only tag and class, but let's say ID. Uh, we have a, an ID here of a lesson one and it's selected. We can use the CSS star here to select everything in the entire document and, and make it have a red border on it. And now the design is just perfect. And those are basic selectors. They work just like we are familiar with with CSS. Now let's move on to basic animations. I'm gonna focus on these little orange boxes here at the bottom. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna select the boxes and then filter them for the first one. And I'm gonna say, box, I want you to, what, hide. And I want you to do it over 500 milliseconds. Now when hit save, it's gonna shrink up and fade out. And that's hide. You can also do show. Um, and uh, in the, the time that you put in here, <clears throat> for example, I put 800 milliseconds, is how long it takes. So now it's slower on the coming out. You can even put a delay, dot delay, right in between them and say, you know, 300. And now it's gonna go up, stop, and come back out. So you can do pretty powerful animations like this. Instead of saying hide, like, let's do something else. Let's do slide capital UP, get rid of this delay here. And now instead of shrinking, it's sliding up and coming back down. And we can say uh, slide down too. Up and down, fade out which is just more of like an opacity kind of uh, animation. So these are all kind of methods that have built-in animations. Now let's focus on the actual animation method. And it's called animate actually. Inside of here you can put any CSS attribute and value. So for example, height, and let's say uh, 200 pixels. And then after this curly bracket, you put the duration, how long is that animation gonna last? I'm gonna hit save and this thing is gonna grow 200 pixels in 300 milliseconds. And it doesn't have to be just the, you know, the size of it. Let's say for example, bottom, I wanna move it up. It goes up from 200 from the bottom. And you can chain these too. So if, for example, bottom 200 pixels, well, let's add another one. Let's add left. And now it's going up into the left. And you can say how long you want it to do, let's say 800 milliseconds, right? So there's a lot of power built into these built-in animations. And this is why people like me really enjoy jQuery because you just write one like line of code and all of a sudden you have things flying around on the page and it's just so much fun. Next, we're gonna talk about index filters. We've already seen this where I save and it's just, it's just the paragraphs, but I can take all that selection and filter it down with jQuery to just the first or like the last or even all the ones that are greater than two. Look at that star out there, greater than two, or less than two, or equal to two. <laughs> there you go. So you notice that it's the third because this is zero index. jQuery starts counting with zero. So zero, one, two, that's what we're talking about. So those are index filters. You're basically walking through your selection and finding the one that you specify. Now let's quickly talk about relationship filters. These filters are based on the relationship of the DOM element. So for example, let's take this H2 here, and then we have one, let's actually add another one. Copy, paste, but this time let's remove this span inside of it. Okay, so now we have two H2 elements and they're both being selected, but now we wanna select only the one that has inside of it a span. And there's only one that has a child of a span, and that's the one that's being selected. All right, let's get this selection out of here. Let's look again at those boxes. Now I'm selecting all the boxes. Now I wanna filter that selection for only the boxes that, that have things in them, children in them. So if they have a children, then they are a parent. So this selects only the ones that have numbers because those numbers are children, but what about the ones that are empty? So it selects only the last one here because it has no children. All right, those are relationship filters. Next, let's look at attribute filters. HTML attributes are things that are inside of the tag like class or image source or like the href on, a, on an anchor link. And we can filter for those things. For example, I have all my paragraphs selected and I can narrow that down to the ones that have a class of, 
lead like we've already done before. But it's a lot more powerful than just saying has class of lead. We could do we could do things like name, and I think I named the second one shorty for some reason. But what about if we don't know the full name, but we know just a, a short string of it? I could say uh, find the one that has any type of the, the of the string name of shorty. So in show is all is all I know, and this can be actually quite useful. For example, if I want to look at all those links at the bottom, and I want to filter for the href, the one that has an href. Um, of .co.uk, and I don't know all the links, but I know that it ends with like it's a it's a, a British site. I can use the dollar sign to say this is the string that matches at the end. And so now, uh, because YouTube is a British website, so I can find all of the links that you know enjoy tea and crumpets or something. And you can imagine how powerful this can be if you want to like search on the page for all of the uh, links that are PDFs you know, that end in .pdf and add like a little link or something like that, right? There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Thanks for watching this video. It was so much fun to make. And if you like making cool things as much as I do, be sure to check out the rest of this series. And after that, Take your JavaScript skills to the next level and check out my Killing It with jQuery courses. Now these are some courses that I'm currently developing. So when you go to killingitwithjQuery.com, you can sign up to be informed about updates as I go along, little snacks of value, and bonuses that I'll be sending to everybody as I gear up for the release later this year. And if you're watching this now, Later, after the course has already been released, we'll go to killingitwithjQuery.com and start killing it with jQuery, right? Link is definitely in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Oh my goodness, sign up. <laughs> I'll see you next video and keep on hacking. Okay, okay, okay. Killing it. Killing it with jQuery. 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 No, how do you even say this? How do, you, how do you say killing it with jQuery without sounding stupid? Killing it with jQuery. <laughs> killing it with jQuery. Killing it. Killing with jQuery. Oh, that was a mess. Jeez. All right. I had a knife or a gun. Killing it with jQuery. Killing it with jQuery. Yo, killing it with jQuery, yo. Yo, I'm just a killing it with jQuery, yo. Killing it. Killing it. Killing it with jQuery. Killing it with jQuery. That's, that's the winner. That's the winner.